Hi everyone, it's Sue and welcome back to Discovering the Art of Living. Now if you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button below as well as the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. So last week's DIY, I decided to make some more face masks for my family since now that we're out in public shopping we are required to wear one. And I was looking through my stash of fabric and found some really really cute Wizard of Oz themed fabric and I thought there's no place like home during the pandemic. So I found a really easy pattern on the internet to use ties for your mask instead of elastic since there is a bit of an elastic shortage now. And there's a link in the description box below for this woman who uses stretchy materials like t-shirts and old pajamas, anything that's stretchy to make ties instead of elastic for your mask. And it's a pleated mask that I thought was fairly easy and straightforward for anybody to make. So if you missed that video and you'd like to see how to make a pleated mask with ties, check on the link above. So last week, a dear friend of mine sent me a lovely bouquet of flowers for my birthday, and they just brightened up my day so much that I've been enjoying them for the last week or so. But as things go, they're starting to die off now. And I thought, mm, how sad. I wish I could enjoy these flowers or flowers like this forever. And especially with me having a black thumb, I knew potted plants were not the way to go. So I thought, what about making some of my own? So I was looking through the app for my Cricut machine and lo and behold, there's lots of different patterns to make a variety of beautiful spring flowers out of paper that will last, maybe not a lifetime, but a long, long time. So I thought I would try my hand at making a beautiful bouquet of paper flowers. So if you'd like to see how I made out with that, let's get started. So the first step was to use my Cricut to print out all of the petals for these really pretty white anemones. And I'll try to put a link in the description box below to the pattern. So I used plain white cardstock for the petals and it's really pretty double-sided green and brown for the leaves and just black for the center of the flowers. Now I was very impressed at the detail that this Cricut machine cut out the little centers. There was just a couple of little casualties that you probably won't even notice. So the pattern made enough petals to make three full flowers. So I divided them into sets of three. There's five of these light bulb shaped ones and five of the more heart shaped ones. One black little strip, two centers, and two white little circles for each flower. There's also enough for two leaves per flower as well. So I did one with the brown print and one with the green print. So I used a piece of floral wire for the stem of the flowers and some really tacky Eileen's tacky glue to hold the cardstock in place. And a piece of wax paper just to protect my work surface. Now taking just a regular pencil, I just rounded the edges and folded the petals of the leaves a little bit just to make them look more three-dimensional and realistic, but I will be fluffing them up more at the end as well. Now just the only criticism on the Cricut app is that the directions for assembling a lot of these projects are pretty vague. So you have to kind of look at the picture and look at videos such as this to kind of help you piece all these pieces together. But once I did one, I kind of got the hang of it. Once all the petals were rounded out, I took one of the discs and they actually have five little slots in them that you can't really see too well. The heart-shaped petals went around first. So the five heart-shaped petals, the little notches fit into the grooves and you glued them into place.
After waiting a couple of minutes for the glue to dry, I took the little light bulb shaped petals and the same thing. Just put some glue in the center and the little notches fit in between the heart shaped petals and I glue them around. Next, I took each of the little black centers and just kind of feathered up the little stamens to make them look more realistic. Then I glued both of them into the center. Next I took this little scalloped strip and there's actually a little tiny score line at the bottom so I just folded that under and that made sort of a little flat area in order to glue the center on. Once I had it all folded out I wrapped it around and glued the pieces together. Then I press the little scallops on the top towards the center to make sort of a little dome shape for the center. Put some glue on these little flaps that I flattened out and glued it to the center. I just used a pencil to kind of push it down and hold it in place until the glue dried. While the petals were drying, I took the leaves and again just sort of rounded the edges of the ends just to make them look a little bit more realistic. So I decided to use double sided tape to attach the floral wire on just because I thought it would stick a little bit better. So the other remaining little disc, I just taped the wire to that and then taped it to the back of the flower. Then I glued the leaves around the flower. If 
finally once everything was in place and the glue was dried I just kind of bent the leaves and the petals up a little bit and the stamens as well just to give it more of a realistic three-dimensional look. And there you have it, a set of three beautiful white anemone flowers that you can enjoy all year round. See you next time on Discovering the Art of Living.